Welcome to Impact, the show addressing topical issues for young adults. I'm Jas Robinson, and today we will discuss the question, what is beauty? Beauty and body image are intertwined. So we'll go to beauticians, plastic surgeons, talk about eating disorders, and discuss these issues with Professor Viren Swamy of Anglin Ruskin University. But first we head to the Grafton to ask Cambridge a question, what is beauty? We pursue beauty to feel better about ourselves. But is it just another money-making addiction? Aren't we all supposed to be beautiful? It's clearly a sensitive subject. So to get some answers, we asked Cambridge, what beauty products do they buy and why? The last beauty product, so <laughs> Cosmetics, I don't really use cosmetics, but I use um, lipsticks, eyeliner, um, mascara. Um, I don't actually really wear makeup. Um, probably mascara, but literally that's it. It was a uh, Nivea night cream. Um, I bought it because I, uh, I felt like I had you know, a, bit dry, a bit of dry skin. Why do, I, why do I wear makeup? Because it gives me confidence, makes me look good. Honestly, I think to look better, um, to look more appealing. Um, also, you know, for self-confidence, um, to, look, to look better for yourself at the end of the day, that I think is the most important thing. My name is Frederico, I manage the Angel Beauty Parlor in Grafton Saint, and I've been working in the beauty industry for 12 years. The majority of her clients, they would come for have threadings, eyebrow, full face, upper lip, um, but we also offer facial treatments, massage, teeth whitening, uh, nails, cuticle care. So every time you know celebrities, they change their haircuts or they, their style, you know, people they come for, they, they try to look like them, so they come to us to, um, you know, quite a little help. So how else do we seek to look like celebrities? Who decides what is beautiful? Is it the media or your neighbour? As a nation, we spend 17 billion pounds a year. So what are we looking for? We went to Cambridge Regional College to learn more. Making a client feel beautiful is about what they feel makes them more confident. Some people might not be confident, but having their hair done or having their makeup done might give them that little bit of confidence that they need. So I feel beauty is more than skin deep. Definitely, you know, you've got every aspect. People can be naturally beautiful, and then some people, you know, they're still naturally beautiful, but they won't feel it. So they need that little bit of extra. So that's why they, you know, maybe do their makeup, do their hair, just so that the whole look, they feel beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's not necessarily what you look like. I mean, everyone sees beauty as different things, so really what is the answer to what is beautiful? Because everyone sees it differently. I do think there's a lot of pressure in, you know, the news, the celebrities, and there's a lot of expectation that females especially need to live up to, but it's not about that. It's literally all in yourself and it's within. It doesn't come from any, anything else. It's just who you are. Yeah, that's absolutely beautiful, actually. The fashion photography is what they're wearing more than what, who they are, you know. But the portrait photography, I really um, like about it. It's like you capture people uh, themselves and the beauty in them. Yeah, I think it's um, to evoke um, some feelings. Uh, and you definitely see what, what they feel in the picture. It's like we're talking about beauty here it's like everyone has a beauty in, in, in on their face when they smile or just when they or, or their energy is just like really really beautiful um, the my job is like just to take it out and capture that there is beauty comes from feeling and you see them on the photo so it's like they're quite um into each other you can just can't, cannot separate them because there is a there's a beauty which is physical beauty it's like really attractive at first sight but you might think like oh when someone smiles it's like that really attractive because it's the, the energy so yeah I'm trying to just kind of combine both and show it as it is. So far we have seen that there is more to beauty than meets the eye. Some seem to believe it is as shallow as a magazine cover but others think it is beneath the skin where beauty really lies. 
but as our perceptions of body image become more extreme, so do our methods of manipulating how we look. So why do people change more than just their haircut? Okay, so generally what types of things do people not like about their body? Well, um, I sort of categorise it in sort of three ways. Um, one is if they don't fit in with their cultural, racial, peer group profile, because we all want to be liked and accepted in our peer group. That's one thing. Um, for example, you know, prominent ears, you might think it sticks out and people might comment. So that's another category, which is when people make comments about your appearance, it can really affect you. And the third type is when things have changed from where they were. Uh, so if, you, if you've aged, then you may hanker after how you used to look. And although in years past people accepted aging, uh, they had no choice, today we have options. And sometimes people feel younger than they look. So the way to address that is either health, nutrition, advice, exercise, or you might think about having a discussion about surgery. So surgery can seem a little extreme to pursue beauty. How can surgery help people with low self-esteem? We always have to consider whether surgery is the best option for someone with low self-esteem. Sometimes it's just support, sometimes it's psychological help, and I often work with a psychologist. Not only in case the patient will benefit from no surgery, but also to support them through surgery should we agree that that's the best option for them. Changes in the perception of ourselves can come from something more than a physical disorder. So perhaps the next step to understand what this can lead to is by talking to a recovered victim from an eating disorder. How can someone stumble down this dark path and what road leads to recovery? Yes, anorexia is a very serious mental health problem. It is a very severe psychological mental health issue. It's very different case by case and you couldn't say media contributes towards eating disorders 100%, um, but it definitely would have an effect on some people. So I would look for things like if someone's going to the bathroom after they've had a meal, that could be a sign of bulimia. Uh, Over-exercising and secretive exercising, um, that could be another thing to look out for. And during meal times, I think looking for, for a kind of attitude around food. So are they cutting up their food into lots of little bits? Are they playing around with their food a lot? Yeah, so BEAT is the UK's leading eating disorder charity. They provide support for not only the sufferer, but they also care for the, uh, the carers, the parents and the friends. They've got online uh, groups that you can join and talk to people. And we try and kind of promote a kind of equality of um, mental health issues. So, When I was seeing the school nurse when I was 12 and the word anorexia nervosa was brought up, um, it wasn't an, a very understood illness back then. So I just kind of thought this is something I have, something I just, you know, live with. And it was when I was 23 or 24. Um, and very sadly, it was when I got to a very low weight and my family had started to notice that they, they started pushing me for help. Um, and I think I ended up in hospital a few times from suicide attempts. And I think that was part of a wake up call to I kind of had a choice, do I want to continue down this line or do I want to get better? We're here in the studio today with Professor Viren Swamy to talk about the psychology behind beauty. So Viren, why do you think people go to great lengths to achieve different types of beauty? Um, I suppose a different, there are different reasons. One reason is people perceive people who are beautiful differently. We think they're, they're more successful, we think they're more popular, we think they're better at keeping secrets, all kinds of different things. In other words, we positively perceive people who are beautiful, but then we also treat them differently. So people who are beautiful get treated better in occupational settings, they get a higher starting wage, they're less likely to be fired, they're more likely to be promoted, they're more likely to be helped. Um, and there are, all, there are all kinds of studies showing that people who are beautiful get treated more positively. So if you, if you, if you experience those positive outcomes and you want to be more beautiful, you take steps to want to be more beautiful. But also as a society, we are beauty obsessed and we place a premium on beauty. We like people who are beautiful and we, we want to emulate people who are beautiful. What actually is the difference between body image and beauty? So beauty or physical attractiveness is typically our, out, our outside view of ourselves. Um, it's how other people view us. Um, so it's the kind of the shell of our bodies, for example. 
body image is, is much more subjective inner view of ourselves. It's what we think about ourselves. It's how we view our bodies. It's what we think about our bodies. And it's how we feel about our bodies. So typically someone who is incredibly attractive to other people, who is perceived as being incredibly attractive, could still suffer from negative body image. And conversely, someone with negative body image could, for example, be incredibly attractive. You've just said that we all see beauty differently. What actually happens in the brain? So when we see either something beautiful or something or someone attractive, um, there is heightened activity in a, part, in a part of the brain called the occipital frontal lobe. And that's also the part of the brain that's, uh, that shows activity when we're rewarded in any way. For example, when we get chocolate or when we get drugs or when we get given money. It's the same part of the brain that experiences heightened activity. So one idea is that when you see something attractive or when you see someone attractive or something beautiful, you're experiencing it as a reward and that's a positive thing. So you want to get that reward more often, so you want to, be, you want to see uh, beautiful things more often. Thank you very much, Professor. Often ignored in modern society is a distinction between beauty and body image. What we want to pay for is beauty, but what we're actually buying is body image. Whilst for many, impressions and looks do matter, in reality, beauty is more complex. It's not skin deep. I'm Jess Robinson, and this is Impact. <laughs>